Because I won't have to go into uh, uh, no alerts mode when I record for YouTube if they are at least like pushed in the corners like that. Because I'd like to stream with the alerts on and still be able to use that footage for YouTube, which I'm gonna do more and more, especially for this batch. So I'm pushing my uh, my subs on the corners so I can like crop them out a little bit in the videos. Might do the same with my camera. Yes, you still sub too early. I can't replay your alert at all. It's not there. <laughs> it's not recorded. Uh, so what was that sub? Um, tier one. Five months. What? Four month streak. Thank you so much, Spaghetti, for the resub. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. Really appreciate it. Thanks for that support and for buying the mugs. <laughs> yeah, if you sub during the intro, it seems like Streamlabs doesn't have the time to record things yet. So I can't even uh, switch scene and then replay the alert because it's not showing in my feed. Why is art so hard? <laughs> art is so difficult. Uh, maybe that's why I like it. Maybe that's why I like Dark Souls and art. I like challenges, right? Thank you, thank you. Hmm, the volume level of my alert is so low compared to the music, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna up the follow alert volume just a bit. Okay. Yeah, let me know how my sound volumes are. I think I like there's a point two weeks ago where we made my voice a lot louder. And when when looking at my VODs, I realized I think the music fell a bit behind. <laughs> so I I pumped up the music that you hear, or like the computer sounds overall, which is games and music. All right. So settings. Hey, like me. Only for original creators, not so much for trace artists. Not sure what you're referring to. Oops, it's a bit loud. <laughs> yeah, art is hard, that's why those people trace. It's okay. If they trace, you can't make a living off of it. They might make a few illegal bucks, but they won't improve. They won't improve enough to compete. So it's alright. It's alright. They get what they deserve. Karma. <laughs> uh, if Karma was real, a lot of streamers that got partnered by Viewbotting would be gone. <laughs> Some bad people get away with doing bad things. But not all. You know what? Doesn't change it doesn't change that they are bad. And who wants to be a bad bad person, you know? Alright. Um
I started a, a Dark Souls artwork this weekend. Looks interesting, I think it could end up being good. It's one of those artworks that take a lot of my time though, so... I will need the next weekend on it for sure. It's okay, because I don't really plan on gaming this next upcoming weekend. So I might finish this artwork, put it on Etsy. That's exciting. <gasps> Thanks for following! Hey Oxy, welcome. Ooh, it's hard to not have like an image reference of her hair. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go. Dark Souls print. <laughs> yeah, the other one is still one of my favorite artworks so far. It's hard because I want to get more into these dark fantasy artworks. I think this is an art style that speaks to me. But of course I have a demographic of you know people that like manga and chibi things. Because that's how I grew my channel. And that's my living <laughs> with my emotes. I feel like there's a lot of things that I do that clash and I, it's, it's annoying. Thank you, Oxy, and welcome, welcome! Just gonna make cute emotes today. I'm continuing a batch here that's gonna go on my Etsy store for everyone to purchase. Oops, I'm gonna skip that. Still need to figure out what I'm gonna do about the music. It's a big part of my stream, so it's a bit of sad news. Yeah, Oxic, that's right, that's what I do since like five years. Except right now I'm making a batch for my Etsy store, so that it's like not exclusive to streamers. It helps with the passive income. Because for the past five years, I spent so much time exclusively drawing for clients and streamers that it limits me a little bit. So by having listings of, of emotes on Etsy that everybody can buy is good passive, passive income. It's a good new business uh, model. But yeah, here's my portfolio if you want to see who I made emotes for. And brace yourself, it's a long page to load. It's a lot of images. to music what uh, well with all DMCA stuff we're not allowed to play any copyrighted music which is every music in the world so right now I'm uh, playing with the rules and playing some video games music it's generally accepted to play video game music since we can already play that music through playing a game on Twitch
but I'll have to like start creating great playlists of copyright free music. Maybe pay for a license for that or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's gonna be a problem for streamers. I wish I had like a lot of free time because I'm also a musician. I could make myself a playlist, but it would take years. <laughs> so it sucks for that. Like I really wish I could make like a bunch of music, but I have my hands full with, with art and art projects for now. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Mine was cool because for once I didn't uh, stream gaming and just started drawing and exploring with my Dark Souls drawing print. And it felt nice, it felt right. It's a kind of exploration that I need to do more. And yesterday was cool. I went to my parents with Crystal to celebrate Crystal's uh, um, acceptance in Canada. How do you call that? She got approved for the permanent residency, which is insane great news for us because it's such a hard process to, to immigrate. 
and my parents were so cute. They, they bought her flowers and and a great cake that says Canada on it. <laughs> it was so cute. Crystal cried. Because <laughs> it was so thoughtful of my parents. They're just the best, god damn it. They're just the best. So that was so nice. Crystal feels really welcome to my family in, in the country. So that's amazing that she's now permanent residence. It means now, well, she's gonna get her permanent resident card soon by the mail, which means that she can now finally travel after like a year and a half of being stuck here. She's gonna have the right to travel back to see her family, you know. And to travel in general. So as soon as we get a vaccine and everything, we can we're gonna go out there. We're gonna travel. And it's gonna be great. There's something that we consider doing in the future. We're both content creators. We just need computers and internet to work. And I always, always wanted to travel and I never could my whole life because I was too poor. But things are different now. And we're thinking it would be okay for us to take two weeks or even a month and go to a travel destination of our choice. And just rent like a very cozy big airbnb with a couple rooms so we can like settle in stream and like some place with like a really good internet with good upload and we can look it up in advance and we just settle there for like a couple of weeks and we just work and live there we could do that as often as we want anywhere in the world it's a great thing to think about great option for me to travel because then we can just like stream in the morning and stuff and then and go out and explore and visit, like, you know, just uh, do the travel part, exploring. So imagine that, we could go to South Korea, find a nice Airbnb with an insane good internet and stay there like three weeks. And we could just live there and stream and do our job from there. Make my emotes, make my art and then go out in South Korea, right? Yeah, and we could even like vlog it, so double the content. <laughs> could do that in Japan. Yeah, that's, that sounds insane. And it seems like it's something we could do and we're both interested in. Of course, that's more of a project of like two years from now or something. Because first we're gonna pay Crystal's loans and buy a house here. But after that, it's travel time. <laughs> that could become a, a thing. <laughs> Fast flag, exactly. It's em she's emergency food. It's my emergency food emote. <laughs> I love that it's a joke in the community. Welcome, uh, Fast Black and Mr. Numbers S20. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Come and hang out. <laughs> yeah, Genshin is really cute. It's a cute game. And the art is so cute. It's a good opportunity for for artists to just, just play a game and make cool art with it. The perfect game for emotes. <laughs> Twitch is so great for that. You're doing something, you're gaming, you're chilling after work, and then you just have a stream in the background to hang out with. <laughs>
since you're not an RPG kind of guy. That's totally fine. What kind of games do you like? I'm pretty versatile with games, except that I I'm getting older and I have so many ambitions with my art and projects that I want to do and I don't have like my game time is so limited now that I have to be very careful and kind of just go for my favorite game genres. I can't explore as much as I want to, as I want or used to. Like I used to play a lot of different genres of games but yeah now I'm very strict <laughs> with my choices. So I tend to focus on games, like my favorite type of games, like Dark Souls. Yeah, basically. And like horror games, like uh, I've been enjoying the past few years playing The Resident Evils, Dark Souls. I do miss RPGs. Like I, I did play, uh, I used to play tons of RPGs as a kid. The last RPG I played, I think, was near Automata, and that's... Oh no, no, I did play like the Final Fantasy 15. I liked it. Yeah, I love the team that makes near Automata. I kind of have the same vision and passion as my favorite director, which is uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki, director of From Software with the Dark Souls games. He just has, he gets my vibe. <laughs> he gets my vibe of liking dark fantasy, tough challenges, that games that are rewarding your patience kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, Great art, great music. Yeah, I get the same vibe from the Nier Automata series. They are they are remaking soon, I think for PS5, the Nier, the first Nier. That's a pretty old game now, I think like a PS2 game. They're remaking it, so I'll definitely play that game. I'll get on that train and I'll make a tons of art for it because it's these games are gold mines for artists to grow on Twitter. Yeah, Nirat Onomata was so good. <laughs> I'm with you on the multiple endings thing. I'm not a fan of that. And I'm not a fan of multiple endings series. I don't like No, I don't like that. It's like the game doesn't have a, an official ending. You know, you read a book and then there's no official ending. It's like, choose your ending. Hey, I don't want to choose the ending of your book. I want to be told a story. <laughs> I don't know, it's not for everyone. Oh, of course, if it's free to play, they have uh, other ways to monetize it, but in app purchase. That makes sense. No games should be just free for being free. Everything's a business. So it is expected to have purchases in games. That's okay. I think it's a decent free to play game. It's a game good enough that f the fans might even want to to give them money through like buying whatever skins or something. Give them money just to support them, you know. That's good. That's when a free to play is successful, I think. It's like League of Legends. I used to love the game so much that I was happy to support them with some money because I played so many hours and I like the game so much. So you just kind of reward them with buying a skin for your favorite character. 
and that's good. Again, that's another success of a free-to-play game that actually gives you a great game to be passionate about. So much that you want to support them. But there's many free-to-play games that don't have the same success. They don't have like a really good game and... I don't know. The whole time you just feel like everything isn't there to try to want to make you want to spend money but not to have fun. <laughs> a lot of mobile games are like that and that's why I don't really like free to play mobile games. Smite Rocket League Call of Duty. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I always heard so many good things about Rocket League. It never went like so viral that everybody on Twitch played it or anything, but it has like a core strong following and everybody can respect that the, the game seems like a really good game. It's not for everyone, but we all know that it's a good game. To me, it sounds silly, just like playing soccer with a car from the outside, it sounds absolutely silly. But just hearing my good friends that I trust their opinion on games, and they like, they loved it so much for a time. <laughs> so I trust that it's a very creative and good, successful game. Now it's completely free. Mm. That's nice when companies do that. When they know they're done making money with the game and they, they just kind of give it away to their fans so that they can just keep playing it. Kind of like uh, Team Fortress with uh, Valve and other old games. So I'm thinking of making this Mona emote into like a, a note kind of emote. Where she would be just writing something with a, a quill. Is that a quill? That's the right turn. Like that. Writing something in her book, her maid book. So it's a good note emote, I think. It's just a challenge. She has a massive hat. I already made made it a million times smaller than it is. It's gonna be hard to make her look like the character and look clean. Hmm. These characters are so detailed. The creators of Castlevania created a new anime. Oh yeah? But what about Castlevania? I hope they're gonna continue it. By the way, I have not continued it since we talked. Because <laughs> I'm still not ready to make the artwork for Castlevania that I wanted to do. And I'm waiting to have time for it. And then I'm gonna watch and finish the anime to put me in that mood again. I'm thinking... After my Dark Souls uh, 3 artwork that I'm doing, 
I might make one for Avatar. And after that, I would try one for Castlevania. So it's already finished after two seasons? That sucks. <laughs> My stupid alert. I found this alert uh, alert sound. It's an old one. Uh, soon, soon, Prox. You're getting it soon. Thanks for the resub, buddy. I didn't have time. I swear, I'll do it soon. <laughs> soon we... Can we... But, but, but can we be Halloween forever? I like the spooks every month of the year. But I guess I can do that for you guys. Hi Toki! How have you been Toki? Good to see you. Is that cute? Kinda is. Okay. It's just gonna be a very busy mota. It's gonna be hard. We'll see what I can do. But it seems like some... As long as I'm okay with cropping the sides, it should be looking okay. So it's a Mona emote that's writing notes in her book. In her like wizard book. Oof. Let's try that. Kind of recording for YouTube at the same time as I'm streaming today. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I kind of want to open my camera, but I hate how it gets in the way of YouTube and I need to crop it away. Oh yeah, I was saying that this this alert sound is an old one on my channel, and it be two cheers, Toki. I cheers. <laughs> and when I I listened to it earlier, I'm like, oh my god, I, I need this alert for at least a month. <laughs> this old song, the Yatta song, is so funny. Look it up on YouTube; it's great. Yatta, Yatta, Yatta. <laughs> AC, thank you so much for two months. Oh, with the campai emotes. Cheers. That's great. Thank you so much. And Prox, again, thank you very much. The Photoshop window. Yes, I can do that. And I, I'm thinking of doing that for my next artwork video. Because you know that the one I just posted recently with the Viconia artwork seemed a bit choppy to look at because I zoom in and out so much and it's such a long speed paint. It might be easier on the eye if I just uh, put like this Photoshop canvas on a separate monitor and then filming just that monitor. I anyways, there's a way to do that so that you don't see me zoom in and out all the time on the video. So I might, I will try that for the next video. I don't really want to do it for these emotes. As long as I don't zoom, I'm, I'll try not to zoom out too much. <laughs> I know, Prox. It's a hard life to only have 25 emote slots. It's a hard life to be irrelevant. <laughs> Yeah, it's also in FFZ at least, you know, so that at least in my channel people can use this emote, the dummy power for like hype, stuff like that. Okay. Come on, Dom, you got, you got this, you got this. Next sketch. Sucrose Tihi. Let's do it. Where are my reference images? Sucrose. Oh, maybe that's all I need. Let's do this. I think this batch will only have like seven emotes. So I don't need to push it if I don't have ideas for the rest. Uh, 
I really like, enjoy working on these though. I like that they are for me and people who buy it on Etsy, you know? They're not for clients. They're not taking them away from me. They're my emotes. <laughs> it's great. The reference image for this one will be my dummy bad. <laughs> You still love that like business move that I made, Toki? <laughs> and of course, I'm keeping my client. I will keep making exclusive emotes, but it's a good way to transcend slowly to more of a passive income business. So, because I need more time to grow my other things, you know, I want to make big storytelling art series on YouTube and everything, like big projects in, in my mind. And they all require a lot of time. So if I can move towards a more like passive income business with my emotes, that creates a lot, a big window for more uh, projects. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, I don't know how much like after the hype trains of a game is gone, if I can still like make business from these emotes on Etsy, but even just during the hype, I can make more money than with with exclusive emotes for clients. So that's pretty huge. But I still like, I still love partnering with awesome streamers like Toki. And uh, I don't know, it's like a nice connection with your community, with you. I like, I like that. I like working with streamers still, I'm still gonna do that. But I'll just be more picky, even more exclusive, but make, make a non-exclusive art onto, on Etsy. Boom, I think it's great. Then it frees up time, I can make more artwork, which grows my YouTube. It's great. <laughs> That's right, Toki. You are. All right, I'm going to use my own emote as reference. I'm going to copy myself. I'm going to trace my emote. Just kidding. <laughs> Just a little base for this batch. Okay. I'm so nervous with streaming art lately. I don't know why. It's like that Dark Souls print that I'm working on. That would be such a cool thing to stream, but I don't trust myself enough. Still not there yet. <laughs> Just need to draw more and more of these artworks to gain that confidence. You think I did well on my Bartles Gate print? It's so weird, I don't know what to think about my Bartles Gate print. Because whenever I post this kind of art on Twitter, it's like nobody cares. It's like way more advanced than anything I've ever done, and, and just I, it gets like five likes. Like, it's so weird. I'm like, maybe it's just me, maybe I, I see it as like a leap, but. It's not as interesting as just little regular manga art for my audience. <laughs> I don't know. Don't 
don't know what to think about it. To me, it looks good though. You do want the print of it? I can easily put it on Etsy for sure. I'm wondering how much of the Baldur's Gate community would browse, would want it. But uh, again, it's not really uh, any more work for me to put it on Etsy, so I'll do it. But thanks for uh, giving me the confidence to try it on Etsy. Put it on Etsy and probably the next Dark Souls one that I'm doing. You know what I can do when I just want to to show you stuff that I don't want on my YouTube video? Because <laughs> I'm actually recording on top of streaming. It's like a separate... And I can just stop the record and do stuff for the stream and then start recording again when I draw. Yeah, that's fine. Good idea, Dom. Good idea. I want to show the stream the result of my artwork a bit different than the one that came out on Twitter because I kept working on it. Artworks. gave uh, this result <laughs> which I think is pretty cool like it's uh, kind of realism fantasy just a new style that I tried and looks pretty clean thanks for following Angzul looks pretty clean I'm just gonna throw it on Etsy The, yeah, the recording back on, exactly. Yeah, you know what? That looks great! <laughs> but yeah, nobody cared for it on Twitter, Reddit, or even YouTube. But I think it's just a good thing to add in my portfolio. And as a print on Etsy because that's that doesn't hurt anyone. For the few Baldur's Gate 2 fans that remain in this world. That's the thing though, not everybody liked this character, Viconia. I find her very interesting. If you watch my stream you can see why. <laughs> and yeah, on Reddit when I posted it, someone was arguing with me. Like like, Hizzy was saying that he always kills Viconia as on site because she killed like an entire family with their children. The guy didn't understand his her story right. They did not understand her story. <laughs> they had to argue and tell him the story.
So now, not every Baldur's Gate fan is a fan of that character. It's a cool art to do though. I'm glad I did it. Bottom line is I'm uh, I'm sprouting some sprouting I'm sprouting some content lately. And I just need to keep going, right? Let's keep going. Content, content. And I need to be ready whenever the the hype trains of other games come out this time. Just get on that art train and make fan art, put it on YouTube. I'm just like drive more new people to my channel this way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I could have done Baldur's Gate 3 fan art, but the thing is, I don't want to ruin my own experience. I really want to wait until the real, the real launch of the game. I really don't like the concept of early access for a AAA company game like that. I hate it so much. And I hate that it separates the hype of the fans, the ones that are going to play the early bugged access beta game, and the ones that are going to wait. I wish it, they would just have waited so we can all get hype at the same time and make art when the game comes out. And I'm wondering if they're gonna keep adding content to the early access so that eventually the game will be like almost done but not quite. It's gonna be awkward. <laughs> Ugh. I hate early access. I hate that the companies kind of have to do that to keep working on their games now. It's a hard business video games for everyone. It's a really hard business. I've been in it for a minute. <laughs> it's insane. It's so weird. Like even companies like Telltale's, who hey, everybody know, everybody love their games, and yet they go bankrupt. Boom, done. It's crazy. So of course I understand why small teams have er put their horror games on their early access while they are developing it, just to keep funding the game while they make it. It's a good way to know to ahead of time if it's going to be worth spending an extra two years on that game. If people, because there's a chance that it comes out after those three years and people don't like it. Then they wasted all of that money. But releasing it early access, people show that they love the game, then they're like, oh, okay, well then, okay, we'll put two more years in, in it. So I get it. <laughs> I just hate it that they have it has to be like that. Because now we're kind of just playing unfinished games all the time. You see a waifu wall. Yeah, even the boys in this wall are waifus too, I agree.
<laughs> What's up, Tate? Been watching a lot of spooky content. I love it so much. And there's a bit of an influx of it because Halloween happened, so just binging everything. Even though it's November, I don't care, it's spook -vember. Spook Vember has just started. But speaking of TV, The Mandalorian is coming this Friday, I think, new season. Oh, you definitely don't need to like that show, and I kind of, I get it, I don't know. Are you a Star Wars fan in general? For people who love the Star Wars universe, that grew up liking characters like Boba Fett and everything, this show has something special for us. It just did something right that none of the movies have been able to give us in the past few years. That little, that little immersion that we used to have in episode like 4 and 5 That little immersion in that world It's slow, it's gritty, it's immersive There's something cool about it, it's different So, yeah It's not like the greatest production of all time, but Definitely give something fresh that we enjoy. <laughs> I don't even have great like hopes for it for multiple seasons of that. But I'll watch it. Oh damn, my sketch is getting just on point. Let's see if I can keep this going. I'm so glad I'm live doing this finally! I feel like I was supposed to do this Friday, last Friday, and I'm here a week later trying to press this go live button and, and do this with you. And I am! And I'm enjoying myself! Because I had a couple days off stream, it was a nice break. tried so hard to like it. Oh. I never judge anyone for not liking something that I like. I'm just happy that I do. It's just fun to like something. It's <laughs> just fun to enjoy things. I would hate to be someone who tend to don't to don't like the things that everybody like. You know? For example, new anime comes out, everybody absolutely loves it, and then you watch it and you're like, this shit sucks. Well that sucks, you know? <laughs> it would suck, uh, I think. To hate things like uh like the greatest things out there. To hate these things would suck. <laughs> like hating Alien 1 and 2, hating Terminator 2, hating uh, Jurassic Park, or... You know. It would suck being contrarian to that point. Thankfully, I like these things. I tend to agree with the user score. Like, if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, you look at the reviews, I tend to agree with user score, like 90% of the time. 
which gives me a, a great lead to watch movies that I there's a good chance that I will enjoy. I get dissatisfied once in a while with like something that the user score was like high and I watch it and like wow no that, that was bad <laughs> happens but it's rare so it's a great way for me to save time I'm such a big consumer of series such a big consumer of movies it's an important part of my life I love it it's fuel for an artist and I don't have time to watch I mean I don't like wasting time and watch a bad movie so I do look for critics like reviews not critics reviews and yeah I know how to gauge the audience score I know how to gauge it <laughs> if it's like a, a movie in my favorite genre like so like sci-fi or horror um, I can take a lower threshold of the audience score for example 50% and up is a movie that I have a good chance to enjoy enough like I can I can be okay with a 50% score if it's my favorite genre and I'm out of movies to watch in that genre and it might just feel a little gap <laughs> so that's what I do so I'm like okay I'll get I'll watch this movie it won't be the best but um, it might just feel a gap <laughs> And then in other genres, I need like 60% and up, and then there's a good chance that I'm going to watch a good movie. And then you have movies in like a foreign genre that you have, you would never actually see and watch and have an interest in it. But the audience score is like 95%, so you're like, maybe I could give it a shot. And then that's when you get the good surprise. Like a movie like The Wolf of Wall Street, for example. There's no way you're gonna go live a life without watching this movie. It's a fucking masterpiece. But yeah. <laughs> so that's when... It's actually a good thing to uh, to look up for like reviews and user score there's a lot of movies out there that we wouldn't think we would like but we might yeah some things do get overhyped I think well, it's weird because people in my network of Twitter, they're, they're, all, they're all anime watchers and they get on the hype trains. So for example, the hype trains movies of the past two years, uh, not movies, series. Demon Hunter, and there was another one, I forgot which. It was so overhyped that I, I watched it, I was like, eh! This anime is not bad, but it's not that good. <laughs> Definitely not that good. There's some good ideas in it, just a lot of cliches. Same with the uh, uh, Seven Deadly Sins was an overhyped one for me. I just finished the second season and I was like, "Yep, I was right." <laughs> About. But I won't get into my I won't get into my review of it, but I was right. <laughs> After season one, I knew where they, what they were gonna do with season two. Oops, and that they were gonna fall into a pattern, a dangerous shonen pattern. Like it's still, it's still a decent watch, but definitely not a, one of the best. Like very far, very far from a top anime.
you ha oh you haven't heard good things about it. It was pretty hype two years ago on Twitter and on my Twitter feed uh, at least. I loved the first season, but I knew that they already exhausted a lot of the, the thing that was cool about it. And now they're just gonna enter like the, the classic shonen cliche of just battle fest and power ups and <laughs> it loses the little initial charm. I think that a lot of shounens, which are animes for teenage teenage boys, the audience kind of, they a lot of them fall into that bad pattern pretty quickly. At first, they have a cool concept. Look at Tokyo Ghoul, great concept, slow progression into madness, and then turns into a ghoul. And the only thing that that tastes like it used to taste for humans was coffee, and then like. They taste coffee and you're like, oh, it reminds me of being human. And there's a lot of cool things like that. And by the end of the season, it becomes a battle fest of power ups and difficulties to overcome in battle. And then it will be like that for three seasons until it gets canceled. <laughs> it's just a pattern I've seen a lot. And I look at seven of these things and I'm like, yep. Probably gonna die at, at after season three. Like there are shows that get accepted to have an anime because they have a great concept, great first season execution, great music. Then her story is like not made to go much further than that. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, Sword Art Online. Oh, it sucks. I loved that first season so much. My dream was that they would have stretched that first season for three seasons. And it would have been amazing. Just stretch the... the everything about the dungeon. It was such a good concept. I love the, the fact that they entered a boss fight in an MMO. And if they die, they die for real. So imagine how much they would have to prepare and be stressed for that encounter. And and like some people would could force teams to fight that battle and then maybe live to tell them how they did it, you know, like stuff like that would happen. There's there's so many things like that they could have explored and made just this dungeon longer. As it would probably take a long time if it was a real situation, you know? We don't want to know the, the post-life after the first season. It's like the movies like The Maze. You don't want to know what happens after The Maze. We don't care. It's all about The Maze. That was the interesting part. And um, same thing with uh, The Hunger Games. You know, the first two movies are like during The Hunger Games and that's awesome. And then after that, you have like a, a whole huge story arc after The Hunger Games, after The Games. We don't care about that. A lot of writers fall into that pattern. I wrote a, I wrote a big book myself in the past, and I will write again eventually. It's a big project of mine. I will, I, next year, I will probably start that. I'm going to go back to writing short stories, and. I will like, draw the visuals and make the music myself because I used to be a musician. So it's like combining everything I love to do in one big project. I'll make like series on YouTube. I would love, love, love to do that. It's like an end goal of mine. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I wrote a big book in the past and I got the experience at least to, to know how easy it is to fall into bad patterns when you write a book. You have to limit yourself. If you have a great concept, keep turning around this concept and don't go out. <laughs> so even in successful stories like The Hunger Games, 
they fall into that pattern. <laughs> the Maze is such a good example too. Because the first movie is the maze and how interesting this situation is. But after that, the situation changes completely because the second and third movie are the life outside of that maze in that post-apocalyptic place, which becomes such a different, different concept. And it doesn't leave much place for imagination to uh, would prefer it just ends after the maze and you can imagine the rest. <laughs> Alright, so this cute cute girl, Sucrose. She's cute, we're gonna add her glasses and stuff. She's so kawaii, I don't, I don't know if I want to have her be like sassy like my character. But I like this I this expression. In general, it's gonna be a bit of a sass. It can be like a tee too. Let me see. I need at least probably a cheeky, cheeky expression. Yeah, I could have. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's good because it's less like mean. But it's still sassy and cute if you put the eyebrows like this. Yeah, that could be it. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to show her glasses. They're like at the bottom like this. Oof. Enjoying this. Thank you guys for being here. I definitely will be streaming tomorrow and Friday. I'll just keep going with this. I'll finalize these emotes, turn them into a YouTube video for next week. So, an update about my gaming side of things. Um, 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 I thought I was gonna go and play Demon Souls, which is the last Souls game that I haven't played. And I was really excited to play it, the retro PS3 version. Because the new game, the PS5, comes with a few releases. One of them is a remake of Demon Souls for PS5. Uh, it's not made by the same team, it's not made by From Software but it's a very good looking remake of the original that should be very hyped for the community of dark souls which uh, that's that's me um, but for business for my business and where i want to go it's not a very good move to spend tons of stream hours playing the classic game and then the remake it's not very smart so what I'm gonna do is just play the remake on stream, and that's a that's a good compromise. <laughs> so in a week and a half, the new game comes out, and by then I should have received my PS5, and I will play it. I will play it, and I might make some fan art of it, and that's the best way for me to make my content like make sense. <laughs> you play games, you make art of it, you know. As an art channel, that would make sense. Oh, it's gonna be hard to make her glasses. They're like just bottom half type of glasses. But anyways, I'm excited to stream Demon Souls. I hope some of you will be there when I stream it. It's a PS5 game. Should look pretty cool. 
and I will play it on weekends. Definitely, uh, probably my most, the game I'm most excited for this year. Other than than Amnesia that I played this month. But I don't think Amnesia will be my game of the year. What else did we play this year? I don't know. I forgot. I forgot. Damn. I'm not sure what I played earlier this year. That might have been a Resident Evil 3. Um, hmm. And that was kind of good, but not memorable. Um, not sure what I played this year, really. <gasps> You're gonna watch Demon Souls, buddy? <gasps> it's gonna be so fun! It's, it's gonna make sense, you know? I'm such a big fan of this series now, and I'm gonna make art of it. Uh, it should be hyped. It should be hyped for the Dark Souls community for sure. Because a lot of Dark Souls fans did not even get the chance to play this game. It's an old PS3 game. It's not super accessible. It's not on PC. So it's gonna be hyped, and I'll play the freak out of it, I'll take my time, I'll enjoy it, I'll die a million times, and make some cool prints out of it. <laughs> the knockoff DS game, oh, that was this year too? Oh wait, what's the name of this game again? That's not Sekiro, oh we played Sekiro, no that's, no, that's last year, it was game of the year. So it's this year that I played this really long RPG. I want to say Genshin Impact, so it's not Genshin Impact. Think Vision, what what game was it? No, it's it's highly in that uh, that gifted me that game before I even heard about it. He was like, this is his next Souls like game, looks pretty cool. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> then I decided to play it and it was a good time, wasn't it? It was a good time. I had a great time playing it. It was a good like uh in between Dark Souls game <laughs> to play for Dark Souls fans. It was it impressed me. It was a uh, so much content, a lot more polished than I could ever expect. It was like weeb souls and I enjoyed it code vein yeah oh and I played FF what I played FF7 remake yeah yeah good stuff good stuff overall this gate and a few horror games yeah I forgot code vein was maybe this year very long game there's a few fun moments for the stream with it I played it on like super hard mode <laughs> was a lot harder playing the, the game solo without the little NPC helper. Some people were like, you'll never beat this game solo. There's a couple bosses that there's no way it's impossible. 
And it sucks that these people were not there when I actually beat these impossible to kill solo bosses. Couldn't even get that satisfaction. You know when you want to pull to prove people wrong, but they're not there to be proven wrong? That's a sad feeling. So it's like, take that guy who isn't here. <laughs> you were wrong. Oh shit. This character has like a big hat. Why do they have big hats? I don't have room for a big hat. Fuck. Fuck. No. This is chill. I like it. Oh, I love that I already cooked my dinner. This whole week's dinners are already cooked. Nice little garlicky chicken with some veggies, some cheese melted on it, not too much, just like a healthy amount, with some mashed potatoes, and the, the juices of this whole stuff is very garlicky, so it's, you can use it a bit of a, as a sauce, and you drop that sauce on the potatoes too, yeah! The veggies are like uh, broccoli, cabbage, onion garlic stuff pepper hmm it's good and you just broil everything together and at the end you sprinkle some cheese and let it melt <gasps> and it smells like garlic and happiness can work with that. That's gonna be the sketch. It's like a teehee type of thing. Next! Hey, we're doing good. We sketched two. I, oh, I did press record. I'm good, I'm good. Sucrose teehee. Need three more. Hmm. Wait, I thought I only had seven. Wait, oh, we have the on a pout. Good. Woo! Two more, two more. Yeah! Yeah, that's good. We finished two sketches, and then tomorrow I, and Friday, I can turn them into colorful emotes. Nice, I have a good system here with the record button. This way I can keep streaming, I can put on my Bureau back overlay, and I don't have to edit it out. It's easier to just have a bunch of little separate recorded videos and just put them all together after. Yeah, good system, good system. And my alerts now are all like small in the corner, so it's not too deranging. I could do the same thing with my camera, maybe just in the corner. Anyways. I think I'm gonna go get my second coffee. Okay, yeah, and then we sketch the other two. Great, I'll be right back.
back. Welcome, Daze, Tara, Chris, Ta, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Having a lot of fun drawing these. It's gonna go on my Etsy store and on YouTube. It's my second batch of Genshin Impact emotes. Yeah, Chris sounds good. <laughs> Art. I always did a little bit of art in high school and everything, um, but at some point I had a hard turn into music, so I didn't spend most of my 20s making music instead of art. And at the end of my 20s, I, I had a big switch back to arts, made a few mobile games, and studying really, really hard to kind of catch up and catch up and go back to being an, an artist <laughs> and but it's been about uh, seven years now of doing this like full-time like full-time artist about seven years I think <laughs> been making emotes for just a bit over five years now. If you want to see who I made, which streamer I made emotes for. I posted the link in the chat portfolio. Ah, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, bunny. Valkyrie, that's right. Been working with her for a long time. She doesn't really need emotes anymore because she's on YouTube. But before that, I was her guy. <laughs> Valkyrie is so popular now. She might be my number one popular client. Just sad that unfortunately we don't get to work that much anymore together. But we worked long enough that I don't know we're gonna stay net networked together. <gasps> Fi Fi is one of my actual best friends on Twitch. Like we're we consider each other real friends, and that's awesome. <laughs> We were hanging out at TwitchCon last year. I like to hang out again. And uh, this time, double date their girlfriends. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I made these emotes. <laughs> five five emotes. Yeah, all of them. Sleeping bear, I don't know this streamer. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining my stream. We do a lot of art and we play some games on the weekends. My next game is Demon Souls on PS5, the remake. It comes out in two weeks.
phone died. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I never watched Twitch on mobile, but a lot of people do. I'm a big PC guy. I'm always on the PC with three monitors. <laughs> so it's hard to do the, on mobile the things that I do on my PC with such a... Uh, such ease. Oh, so you watch a bit of. Oh, that's right. I think a lot of people do that. Like at work, <laughs> you you watch streams like just on the. It's like a mini monitor. <laughs> In the background. <laughs> yes, the third Discord monitor. <laughs> it does become a, a Discord monitor sometimes for me too. Um, generally for art, I have my chat. Uh, I separate my left monitor with my chat and reference images when I need it and my music playlist and stuff to DJ. Um, on the right, I just have like OBS open pretty much. And off stream, my right monitor has just a bunch of YouTube tabs. All the videos I want to watch that I'm queuing up, <laughs> like podcasts, they're all there. Discord is on my right monitor too. It's funny. You work from home? Oh, Jazara, nice. Is it always like that for you or just because of the pandemic? I never thought in my life I would have the luxury of working at home. <laughs> I know some people that, that would hate it though. Some of my friends would hate that. But yeah, I feel very lucky because I just always had the worst jobs and I went from the worst jobs to working at home drawing my art <laughs> that's pretty fantastic and deep down i'm always scared of eventually having to go back to that old lifestyle go back to just working far away from my field and my goals and dreams you know like losing all of that go back to being a janitor or working in a factory because that's what I, I used to do I was just infinitely ambitious and passionate artist and musician, but I was always working just janitor job and, you know, washing dishes and stuff. So, I'm so terrified of getting back there. It's very unlikely. I'm successful now. I have a big network of potential clients if I ever need work. But when I see all of these new artists coming on Twitch, super talented, I'm always scared that it would eventually create competition. It sucks because I love these guys, I love these artists, you know? But deep down, I've lived in. I've lived with such little security for so long that uh, I'm still afraid of that, even though I'm in the greatest position for an emote artist. <laughs> I normally feel pretty safe though. Like even if Twitch would die, I mean, all of those creators will not do anything else than being content creators. All the people that, all of my clientele that we're friends with, um, they're just gonna move to YouTube or something and I'm still gonna be able to work with them. So I shouldn't be too much afraid anymore. If I made my own emotes? Yeah, I did, of course. They're all Halloween themed right now, though. They're all like, it's still October emotes. I need to switch them. I 
I have two mascots. A little uh, succubus girl with with purple hair, and Dami, who's just a a little devil based on me. <laughs> nice. I think I like this sketch. Uh, it's gonna be probably a sun deer. A sun deer is like. A type of anime character who's acting tough but deep down he has feelings like it's not like I like you or anything <laughs> okay very cool and oh, we're on fire one last sketch and then and then I can start like turning them into colored emotes, which I'm gonna finalize tomorrow and Friday. But I'm doing good here, I'm doing good on time. <laughs> That's cool, Days. If you need someone, I'm generally a bit hard to to reach because I have this big clientele, a lot of clients. It's hard for me to take new clients, but I can definitely like show you to uh, send you to some artists friends if you're looking for like the best art I know who to direct you to I would say avoid Fiverr there's a lot of scam artists there Octo gear mm. that rings a bell it rings a bell, but I'm not sure. All right. Next. Sucrose, is that it? Noel. Noel, which is Christmas in French. Yeah, I'm sure there's other ways to have a fire themed thing. And if you hire a different artist than me, you could probably, well, a, an experienced artist. If you hire a very good artist, that is not me. You could get a mascot, a fire dragon that is different looking. But if you hire like a kind of a small newer artist, they are more likely to make art. Like if you show them five eyes emotes, they will do like something too close to it. No, if you know what I mean. It takes an experienced artist to make things different than what you show them as reference. Yeah, that's my style. This emote will be cute. <laughs> Sounds good and thank you.
Thanks for following. <laughs> I don't have a favorite batch, really. They're all of my little babies. I made thousands of emotes. Popular ones that I made are for Valkyrie, Admiral, Beru, Fai Fai, Hafu, and I don't know, a couple more. Alexia Ray. But I don't know, my personal favorite batch, I don't really have one. <laughs> Well, Photoshop is worth it if it's your job, if you make money with it. But there's definitely great alternatives that are much cheaper. I recommend Clip Studio for that. Clip Studio is a top program for illustrators, very much on par with Photoshop. And it's just a one-time license, so you pay like 40 bucks and it's done, you know, the done deal. Yeah, Clip Studio. In like two words, I think it's like Clip Studio Pro or Clip Studio Paint, I don't know. There's two licenses, one like expensive and one cheaper. If you just get the cheaper one, it's great. You can even wait for Black Friday, It's I'm sure it's going to be on sale like 70% or 50 or around Christmas too. And yeah, that's the greatest alternative in my opinion for PC users.
Yeah, paint tool side works. I mean, it's viable. <laughs> I just think if you're gonna learn a program from scratch, you might as well get one of the professional ones. Because, uh, yeah, even paint tool side, you need to go through a lot of tutorials to get used to the tools. You have to watch hours of tutorial. That's what I recommend for sure. If you want to get into digital art, watch a lot of tutorials of your program until you're like comfortable with it. Oh, that was it. I'm done. Bye. Just kidding. <laughs> I'll stop the record. Okay, take a little break. Then I might, I might go and start coloring them. Wow, we have all of the sketches. Because I think this batch will be a batch of seven emotes instead of ten. Because why not? <laughs> Alexia just reached out. Uh... Oh, we're gonna work on her Christmas emotes soon. And I absolutely agree. days same here I'm glad you found the channel uh, cool yeah oh nice because this month is funny I'm gonna make a few Christmas edits on some emotes from my clients um, I'll make Christmas edits for Alexia Ray for Gabby for myself and uh, yeah I'm sure a lot of, of my clients will reach out so <laughs> I'm sure starting next week I'll start making a bunch of Christmas uh, edits, add little Santa hats to emotes and stuff. It's it's just fun. It's chill. Um, for now I'm finishing this seven emote batch. Then I have one client next week, ten emotes, and after that it's just gonna be Christmas stuff maybe. Uh, not at this time. Dynamics? Not right now. I'm still uh, only working with like my long-term clients that like just come back to me on a loop because I have a lot of them. Uh, there might be a time where I'm gonna open commissions and I'm gonna put it out on Etsy. Uh, wait, 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 I would announce it on Twitter. Um, so that's my Twitter. We never know. Maybe in like a month, I could randomly open commissions. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
to be there for the Christmas event. Yay! Yeah, it's just like a nice ambience. Just like take these emotes from my big clients and add little Santa hats and make them cute. <laughs> Alright, so that's done. The sketches are done. I don't, I'm just wondering if I want to make more for this Etsy batch. These emotes are going on my Etsy store. If you look at my Etsy... Pop, um, Etsy. Something I've been working on recently is uh, starting these batches here of emotes that anyone can buy and use. Like, it's a different license. You pay for them, and you can use them, and anyone that buys them can. So it's different than my exclusive emotes that I always do for my clients. And I'm excited about this. It's pretty popular. Um, yeah, right now I'm making a second batch. It's just going to be seven emotes with different characters in them. I'm just wondering, like I could make, I could make it 10 emotes. Uh, I don't have two. I think it's whatever. It could be seven emotes. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Seven emotes it is, because I need to really go back to making art for my next client next week. Can I need to move on with this quickly? So maybe I start and I turn this into colored emotes. I could go for another hour. And then tomorrow I just continue ham going ham with this. Taking a little break. Hand stretches. <gasps> really, Days? That's awesome. <laughs> That's really awesome. Been really fun making this uh, these emotes. Damn, this one turned out really good. This kit, this sketch, <laughs> very fun. It's a character that's not even out yet. Diona. Diona. But we're making an emote with her. She has a cute design. Birds are chirping, my hands is, are sweating, mom's spaghetti. <laughs> I miss playing a bunch of copyrighted music with my old playlist. Uh, it's, uh, it's a big loss. I always love DJing and playing some cool music. My channel is known for the playlist. Suddenly, we can't play copyrighted music anymore. Big loss for Twitch streamers. 
But, oh well, that's just for now. Uh, Ludwig's playlist? Is it uh, like copyright free music? <laughs> Ludwig is fun. I only... Uh, I discovered him through the, the chess tournament. He was so fun during that chess tournament. I'm sure that it really helped him like blow up. Because chess was like really highlighted and he went... I don't know, he was a just... Uh, he's a funny dude. <laughs> oh, he has a good uh, copyright free music? Damn. Can you post it to me? I definitely would like to browse through like what other streamers gathered for their playlists and I could make my own after, I don't know. There is good copyright free music out there. Just have to look for it. Yeah, I would like you to link it to me if you can. I, I'll permit you. <laughs> if you have it, if you want. Destiny was also listening to really good music the other day. I'm like, well, is that really not copyrighted? Because <laughs> I need his playlist too. A YouTube playlist, perfect. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of like meme songs in there and some gaming and hmm. and and you're sure that he's played this playlist recently? Cool. I'll look it up. Wild arms! Oh, I love wild arms. The fuck? Okay. Oh, I'm not recording yet. Oh, it's all right. What's up, chat? Chat, I added, I added back my gangster Santa. He's sitting on the pumpkin here. I love my gangster Santa! <laughs> He's awesome. Gangster Santa's the best. I bought him last year. We love him. <laughs> yeah, you can see my guitars here, because I used to make a lot of music. That used to be my thing. And um, I will eventually bring back the thing to the string. <laughs> Thanks, Tate. No, you. I just hate that I'm recording this stuff for YouTube too, so it's annoying to have the to edit out the, the camera. So that's why I've been like off camera. But since I'm taking a little break, meh, meh. <laughs> Yeah, the first channel in that link is the one I'm going to use a lot and try to grow really hard like this next year. This is where I'm starting with small things like little speed paint, time lapses. Eventually, that's where I'm going to drop my bombs, the big content <laughs> in the future. So I'm just like slowly growing the channel. Uh, the email tutorials on it are really popular. So I do have to make a few more of those. I added the link of my second channel there. That channel... I tried something. It's my really, really old channel. And 
I decided to like, well, since we have to like delete all of our VODs on Twitch, I decided to just throw every of my game VODs on this one. Just kind of dump it all to have a bit of a database of my content to keep. But it looks awkward because <laughs> it's such a small, irrelevant channel. And I'm dropping like whole streams of eight unedited hours with no views. It's super cringe. <laughs> but I like, uh, I don't know. I like using this channel as just a big hard drive for my content, my past content. It just feels a bit awkward. Because nobody really looks at this. <laughs> it's just a big database of my my playthroughs of Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, 3, Sekiro, a couple of, couple of horror games. Oh well, but that's not an important channel. It's just so my VODs don't just disappear with Twitch. They at least exist somewhere. <laughs> I'm not dropping my art VODs on it, just my gaming. But the other channel is the important one. The art content, more edited, important, like just uh, more serious content. Okay, fuck, uh, I don't know if I'm ready. I'm ready. Am I ready for this? Okay, let's do this. Well, I took a random Gyazo picture, whatever the hotkey is for that.
Sounds good. See you later, days. I know this song. Ah, Chrono Trigger. Hmm. 
classic. So funny, my little, my little uh, three-year-old niece is falling in love with Sonic. She loves Sonic. She is trying to draw Sonic. So for Christmas, I'm probably gonna give her something Sonic related. It's funny because I was the biggest fan of Sonic back in the days, in the early Sega Genesis days. I really grew up a little bit partly with Sonic. The first like four games. I was a big fan too. I drew Sonic so much. He might be one of like the first character that I drew a lot other than Goku from Dragon Ball. I stream I stream, I drew a lot of Sonic. So it's funny that my adorable little niece loves Sonic <laughs> out of nowhere. So I absolutely need to like give her something like a plush or something for, of Sonic.
times like these st streams are like a little uh, sanctuary away from real life things I think that's a good thing from Twitch it's an important thing unless you're like a politi political channel and that's like your content to review political stuff it's good to have a little escape and Twitch is good for that I do think uh, I do think there's a place for conversation and everything. Just not on, not live on my channel. So this feels really chill. Like if I look at my Twitter, oh my gosh, I would only think about politics. But if I draw cute stuff, listen to some cute music, hang out with friends takes me away from the stuff. finishing Baldur's Gate 2 off stream. I'd like to try streaming things that are just better for my stream overall. I want to finish the game though and I really want to stream it but it's gonna be better if I finish it off stream. Upload the rest of the content as a VOD on Twitch in the same uh, collection as my other VODs with Baldur's Gate. And also drop it on YouTube. However, I will stream relevant games like the next Blood uh, Demon Souls. Could not be more excited for this one. It's like a gift to myself to play Demon Souls on PS5.
<laughs> okay, song. I get it. <laughs> Damn it. My playlist. <laughs> My playlist will be missed. Yeah, finish one emote, kind of. Like 90% done. <laughs>
I'm hungry already. Alright, so what's left here? Six emotes, two color, and finish. Okay, that's very good. I could do more, but I think I'm gonna call it already. At least I finished sketching them. And made one emote. I'm hoping to stream earlier tomorrow and clear most of them and then finalize everything Friday and put it on my Etsy store then I start my next client Monday all right so it's a small comeback stream but uh, let's have a better and longer stream tomorrow I appreciate all of you for lurking and just hanging out I really do so have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow.